This is an ECG of a patient who presented with headaches for past few months and doing this ECG we can see that we can see some complexes that appear tallish specifically these QRS complexes we can see the R wave they are tallish the S wave they are deeper along with some changes in the T waves in the form of T wave inversions which can be seen in the leads V5, V6, 1 and AVL. Now before commenting further we have to be sure that the standards are normal because as we know that standards can be an important aspect that can often be missed so if they are not uh, properly set then uh, this can uh, make an erroneous diagnosis of some pathologies. So let's go and see the standards first. I have zoomed in the standards now and we can see that the standards looks normal and this bar suggests that this ECG was done at the appropriate required standards which are the 25 millimeter per millisecond and specifically and importantly the 10 millimeter per millivolt amplitude so these are the normal standards now let's apply the criteria which are present in the literature for the left ventricular hypertrophy the criteria given in the literature for the left ventricle hypertrophy are the coronal criteria, the modified coronal criteria, the Sokolov criteria, and the rom hilt ST point score system. Now let's apply the coronal criteria first. For that, we have to see the R wave in AVL and the S wave in V3 and combining the values for these if it comes more than 28 millimeters for the males and 20 millimeters for the females then this suggests that this ECG is showing the left ventricular hypertrophy. Now applying the criteria, we can see that in our ECG, the R wave in AVL was 23 mm and the S wave in V3 was 20 mm. So combining them makes it up to 43 mm, which is very high above the threshold to make it as a case of left ventricular hypertrophy. So this criteria was met. Let's move on to the other criteria now, which is called the modified coronal criteria. This criteria is a bit of a simple criteria because we just have to see one thing and that is an R wave in AVL. So if the R wave in AVL is more than 12 millimeter, then this criteria fulfills the features for left ventricular hypertrophy applying this to this ecg we can see that the r wave in avl was more than 12 millimeter and it was actually 23 millimeter so this again is fulfilling the required value for the modified coronal criteria meeting left ventricular hypertrophy now let's go and discuss the third criteria this is called the sokolov leon criteria and this is one of the commonest criteria that is applied in the clinical practice and again this is a simple criteria because we just have to see a few things and then we have to see the product for that now let's go and discuss this criteria this criteria just requires two things first of all the s wave in v1 and the r wave in v5 v6 so s wave in v1 and the r wave in v5 or v6 whichever is taller so combining them if the value comes up to be more than 35 mm then this criteria suggests lvh let's apply that 
So we have calculated the S wave in V1, which is 23 mm, and the R wave in V5 or V6, whichever was taller was 22 mm, and combining them, the value comes up to be 45 millimeters, and this is again now higher than the threshold of 35 millimeter. So this suggests that the Sokolov criteria is fulfilling LVH thresholds. So, so far we have managed to apply all these criteria which are fulfilling the left ventricular hypertrophy. Now let's discuss a bit of a complex criteria called the Romhild ST's point score system. This score system actually constitutes a bit of variables and that include the amplitude of the R wave in or S wave in limb leads and the amplitude of S wave in V1, V2, amplitude of R wave in V5, V6, the STT wave changes, left atrial enlargement, left axis deviation, QRS duration and intrinsic or deflection in V5 or V6. Now let's discuss each of them one by one. So before proceeding further, there are some scores associated with these parameters. So I have shown you these points. Now we have to remember these points because we have to add them up whichever criteria is being met. So if combining all of them, we reach to the points of at least five or more then this is suggestive of left ventricular hypertrophy. Anything between four to five is a likely cause and less than three is unlikely to be a left ventricular hypertrophy. So let's apply the first parameter, the amplitude of the largest R or the S wave in limb leads. So now we can see that it has to be more than 20 millimeters to reach the threshold. But in our case, in the lead three, we can see that it was reaching to more than 24 millimeters, which is obviously higher than the required threshold. So this criteria was being met in this case. The amplitude of the S wave in V1 or V2. So uh, in this case, it was 20 millimeters and which is less than the required criteria of 30 millimeters. So this ECG uh, parameter was not fulfilling the LVH. Amplitude of the R wave in V5 or V6, it should be 30 or more. In this case, it was 24 millimeter. So again, this criteria is not met. ST and T wave changes. So these should be opposite. So we can see that the QRS is positive over here and the T waves are negative. And this can be extrapolated to many other leads as well. So this means that we can see the changes that are opposite, the ST and the T wave changes. So this criteria is being fulfilled. Left atrial enlargement. Now this is again an important parameter because it is used in many other different etiologies as well and it is one of the important parameters which should be known to the clinicians before uh, they can decide whether the left atrial enlargement is present or not. So uh, there are some features for that. Now let's discuss these features. So on the right hand side, I have shown you the parameters in the case of left atrial enlargement and over here is over the ECG under observation. So in the lead to the limb lead to 
for a left atrial enlargement the patient should be having a bifid p wave just like in this case with more than 40 millisecond between the two peaks and the total p wave duration should be more than 110 millisecond so by this i mean that the duration between this peak and this peak should be more than 40 millisecond and the total p wave duration over here from here should be more than 110 millisecond now applying this criteria over here we cannot see any increase in the p wave duration and also the inter peak difference is less than 40 millisecond so at least in limb lead 2 this is not being fulfilled again v1 is also another lead in which we have to see the changes of left atrial enlargement for that the first of all the v1 should be a biphasic so this is a biphasic one is upward and one is negative so for a left atrial enlargement the biphasic p wave with a negative portion should be more than 40 millisecond so this means this should be more than 40 millisecond and the depth from here to here of this negative portion will be more than 1 mm deep so i have applied the criteria over here but we cannot see such findings of left atrial enlargement so this criteria is not met left axis deviation we can see that there is a negative vector for the lead avf which is usually present in the left axis deviation so this patient was having left axis deviation qrs duration the qrs duration should be 90 millisecond or more so we can see that the qrs is bit broadish okay it's not that narrow that uh, should be seen in a normal ecg so there is a bit of width and this width was 90 millisecond so this criteria was fulfilled now the final criteria is the intrinsic or deflection in lead v5 or v6 more than 50 millisecond and applying this threshold we cannot see that it was more than 50 millisecond in this case it was a pretty sharp intrinsic or deflection so this criteria is not being met so combining all the features that met we can see that this patient had got a score of a 9 which is clearly suggesting that the criteria for the left ventricular hypertrophy is being met so this again suggested that all the criteria is now being fulfilled and this patient was having a ecg finding of left ventricular hypertrophy